Hey, Heather, it's your girl, Taryn, from Canada. Oh. Hope you're doing well. Anyways, I just have an absolutely yes mm. for knowing what's in your golf bag. Oh. I'm looking to buy a new one, and I can't help but wonder, what the heck does Heather have in her golf bag? Love and light. Love and light. All right, sister friend, I love that. I love that we got some new gals coming into the golf community. What's in my golf bag? What's in my golf bag? Uh, currently playing with some Callaways. Uh, I got the Paradigm Driver, which is great. But what else is in my golf bag? Usually some some sort of cheesy cracker, a cheese it. Uh, you know the cheese crackers with the peanut butter in them. Love those. About seventy five Summer Fridays lip glosses. Um, any sort of mineral sunscreen can't do the 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 stuff with the benzos in it. Mineral only. What else is in the golf bag? Usually a couple loose cigarettes at the bottom because about after the fifth hole, I'm ready for a heater. Um, you know, what else? Got to have a lot of cash to tip the cart girls. Uh, you know, you think that they would be, you think that they would, they would just give you the Venmo. They do not. Um, that, there's nothing more frustrating. You got to have cold, hard cash to tip these broads. Uh, usually a nice pashmina because sometimes if you're playing late and the sun goes down, you know, and you're the you're in the backwoods, it, it can get a little brisk. Uh, always some mega babe to put on the inner thighs because there's nothing worse than when your thighs are rubbing together and you're stuck in a in a in a sand uh, a sand uh, trap and you can't you get sand in the crotch. You're sweaty. The legs are rubbing. That's rough. Some Band-Aids. Band-Aids are in the golf bag. But I have seven different gloves, all men's size large because I have enormous hands. What else is in there? A um, couple Adderalls rolling around and then some Zannies. You got to have uppers and you got to have downers. If it's a good round, you can, you know, beef it up. If it's a bad round at the turn, you got to take half a Xanax and have like a vodka lemonade or a transfusion. If you've never had a transfusion... That is grape juice, ginger ale, and vodka. And it's and with a lime, and it's fucking delicious. Um, uh, Jeff is actually bringing my golf bag out here. He's flying out in a couple of days because I'm playing in a golf tournament with a bunch of male comedians. And I'm sure there'll be other ladies there, and I can't wait to see who's there, but I haven't gotten that lineup yet. But just so y'all know, this is what your girl does. She does a show on a Sunday night, and then she's got an 8 a.m. tea time because she's got to rip it with the boys to keep proving to them that we deserve a seat at the table. It's never enough. You know, the reason I got into golf when I was growing up is because my dad wanted me to have business opportunities. He always said that he closed every deal. Every business deal he ever closed was on the golf course. And at, of course, at the time when I was like seven, he didn't know what kind of line of work I was going into. I mean, hell, when I was a kid, I said, I, well, I did say I wanted to be a comedian. I said, I want to be a funny girl. But I also said I wanted to be a lifeguard. I thought that was a full-time job. Um... So that's that, that that drive of competitions already ingrained in me because my dad used to drill it into me. He was so worried that his daughters were not going to be successful unless we knew how to rip it off the tee box to prove prove to these guys in whatever line of work we went into that, you know, we could be competitive. And I was playing with Jeff the other day. I haven't had a lot of downtime to play, but again, I'm about to be done with touring for a minute. Uh, and take a month or two off. So I'm excited to like relax and actually have a hobby. So I said golf will be my new hobby. Good for the heart health. You get out in the, at the outdoors, get some nice vitamin D, meet other business people. Okay. I said, let's do something that at least I'm going to be in the realm of making deals. Even if all the people at my country club are not involved in entertainment, you never know when you're going to need to know a cardiologist. You know, and I we were paired up in a foursome with a cardiologist the other day. He was fantastic. And I've texted him about six times during panic attacks. So it's always good to have people, you know, and I call the colors of the rainbow in your Rolodex of people to call in an emergency. So anyways, long story short, though, I was not playing well. And golf is one of those sports. It's tough. When you're having a tough day, sometimes you can't bring it back and you only have yourself to blame. I couldn't hit anything past 200 yards. I was just shanking them left and right. Everything was, it, nothing was going in the direction where I needed it to go. And my husband, he's very upset that I'm getting, getting to play at Riviera. Riviera is a absolute prestigious club here in Los Angeles. And I'm not allowed to bring anybody with me. I can't even bring Jeff to like sit in the cart, root me on, clean my clubs, uh, you know, 
f- fluff my tits before I, I hit the tee box. He can't come. He is bitter. He is angry. He is so upset. He he said it's a quote unquote hate crime. He is just so upset that I am not allowed that he is not allowed to come to Riviera and and play, participate, even hang out with all the other boys. You know, he's hoping he can hit hit the hit the par three with Seinfeld. He doesn't give a fuck about watching me go for gold. He just wants to see Andrew Santino and Seinfeld. I don't know, blow him in the locker room. I don't know what he wants to do, but those are his boys. <laughs> so anyways, I'm having a shitty day playing golf. Jeff tries to correct me. And I said, okay, Jeff, I, I'm more of a, the way I learn is I learn by doing, not by watching. So I need to physically figure out what I need to do in my, my backstroke to fix my hips. And then Jeff goes, you know what, you, you just, maybe if you had started sooner, you wouldn't be so frustrated going into playing at Riviera. You didn't put any effort into it. Now you're getting mad at me that you are upset that you're not doing well. And it was such a flashback to my dad coaching me playing golf when I was growing up. Or really, I put an effort to golf when I was preparing for the SAT. And my dad, the day I didn't get into the college I wanted to, my dad doubled down. And he's like, well, maybe if you're putting more effort into your scholastics, you wouldn't be such a fucking idiot. (laughs) And I was triggered for a second and I went off on Jeff. And he was like, you don't have to be such a bitch. And I was like, you're being an asshole. And we got into it. We got into it at the range. There were other people around and I let him have it. And he's like, you know, maybe if you're putting a little more effort and you didn't do everything fly by the seat of your fucking pants. And I was like, Jeff, I haven't had time to fucking play golf recently like, because I'm working all the goddamn time. And then it went into that conversation. You know, that that's the journey that it was into. So I'm hoping to have a great round of golf at Riviera. Uh, but stay tuned. Stay tuned because it's been very triggering for our entire family. But I did ask Jeff, he's like, okay, I'm going to bring out your golf bag. I'll put everything in it that you need. And I said, can you deck it out in master's? Like I got a master's towel, master's hat, master's glove. And he's like, don't be such a fucking loser. No, you can't show up like a tryhard. So I said, fine, Jeff. I thought it was a funny bit if I showed up with a master's bag mat, and like and everything and then I can't hit the ball past 200 yards. I thought it was a bit, but he's apparently not in on the bit. And he thinks I should be taking this more seriously. And I was like, I am, Jeff. I'm closing fucking deals, okay? I gotta go play with the boys. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you're a young woman right now and you're listening to this, learn how to play poker. Learn how to play golf. Learn how to play tennis. What are other... Under, just figure out UFC. Just figure it out. And, and get into UFC. Get it. Find one thing that these men are into. And I'm not saying you have to like it. But just beat them at their own game. You know what I mean? Find one thing that all these guys who get together and you don't get invited to things because it's, well, we didn't think about inviting you because we didn't think you played golf. Guess what, motherfuckers? I do. And I will see at the turn. You know what I mean? I would tell any young woman, find one thing that guys are into and learn how to be semi-decent. You just got to keep up. And that's how you get your foot in the door with some of these business opportunities. Because I wanted to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, this business is, oh, it's, and I'm not, I'm not saying, I've had a lot of amazing opportunities, but you still got to play the boys game a little bit. You know what I mean? You still, you still got to be good. You still got to prove them wrong. And you got to show up with your tits out. And it is sometimes, it's a lot. But I would tell, like, if you know, those young girls that came to the show, what was the advice I gave them? I said, Unless you are dating a guy in college, you do not give him a BJ. And I think that's great advice. You do not go around college. You're going to get, I said, girls, you're going to graduate. You're going to go to college. And all these guys are going to expect you to do things that you don't want to do. A, it's always consensual. And B, he's taking you to dinner. Okay? Okay? I think that's great advice. And also learn one thing that guys are into. I don't know. Maybe you learn how to play Halo. A Grand Theft Auto or something. Just find one thing that can, can connect you on a competitive level with men that is outside of work. And then and then see how you're closing deals. ABC, always be closing. Never forget, always be closing your legs and business deals. <laughs>